got my main man, Locksmith from Rudimental. What's going on, bro? Yo, what's going on, brother? How you hey, doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm all right. Busy, busy, busy. And, bro, I was just saying this earlier to you. I don't understand how every industry has got more busy than usual. Like, I'm talking about the fitness industry, my industry, the music industry, yeah. crazy fit. It's not every industry, but yeah. the ones that I'm involved in. And it's just like, wow. It's a, lot of, a lot of people got a lot of time in their hands, isn't it? But, but, Coming up with new and bright ideas. But you know what's worse than being busy, bruv? Doing nothing. <laughs> exactly. <All right. laughs> you know what I mean? Man, there's a lot of my pals out there that are doing nothing. Oh, for you real. Know? For real. Not to sound insensitive to the situation but there is a lot of people out there like you know i can't you. do nothing but at least at least we're keeping them busy on socials isn't it no i think that's our job seriously yeah. no joke like you know you've got um the medical staff that are doing great stuff you know to keep yeah. us keep us alive really yeah and then you've got the likes of the people that like yourself and myself i like to believe yeah. who are helping out on the mental side of things because there's a lot of people that are on lockdown and they're just twiddling their thumbs, jumping, bouncing off the walls. And then you've got the likes of yourself doing an Instagram live and it just perks up your mood or jump on the Instagram and see yeah. you and you make me smile. Do you know what I mean? My man. And I like My to man. think like, you know, I've got a bit of that as well. No, 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 you do, you do, you do have that. I'm not going to lie, bruv. I remember when you jumped on, when you jumped on the, um, what do you call it, living my best life video. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah I not, remember that. Bro, I, f- I fanboyed. I'm not going to lie. I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, is that Locksmith from Rudimental just did my hashtag thing? I was like, no way. I was like, I messaged, I, I messaged, I messaged Paul Lima. I was like, oh yeah, Lima. You know Locksmith? Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did the video. I tagged him and stuff. I was like, no way, bro. Mum, dad, I made it. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember speaking to Alima about you guys and I was just like, I love the the positive energy that you guys have. Um, yeah. You're always wanting to help people yeah, and you're yeah. straight and honest about it, straight up and down like six o'clock. And I love that. And I, a lot of people probably see me, see me in the position that I'm in and they'll probably think, you know, he's probably too good to to mingle with xyz or he's he's gone clear or he's done this and i never ever see it as that yeah. i'm just that average boy from east london hackney and when i see something that i like on on social media or anything in life i yeah. gravitate towards that because that's, that's that's what keeps me humble and grounded you know what i mean my man ha- hackney so all right so when you so from hackney i was like yes i was like you know what when i'm chatting to locksmith I can tone it down. <laughs> I can tone it down. I, mean, I could be like, yo, locksmith. All right, cool, fam. So uh, what's going on? <laughs> you know what I mean? Definitely, what, um, bro. That's where I'm from. Whereabouts? Whereabouts are Hackney? Uh, I was Murder Mall. Hey. No longer called Murder Mall now. <laughs> it's not. But you know what's funny? I was actually chatting to someone about that recently. And they were like, what? It's called yeah. Murder Mall. Why? I'm like... Why do you think? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, why Come do on. you think? Come on. But you, you must have been around so many Turks then, innit? Like, around there. Hey, mate, you know, the, the beautiful thing about Hackney, um, London as well, is so multicultural, isn't it? Yeah. So, you know, you, you could have uh, Turkish guys all having sort of like their their place in Hackney. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. you have the Asian guys. And then you, but it's just, everyone's intertwined. And as I've always said, if, you, if you've been brought up in London... Yeah, you can go anywhere else in the world and fit in. Hundred, hundred percent. You know and what I mean? It's like, on for me, I don't think there's a better city in the world. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Maybe no, I'm there's, especially when the sun's out and everyone's in the bars, or like you know what I mean, or outside yeah. the bars when the sun's out. Hundred. But yeah, no, definitely, definitely, man. It's, it's something beautiful about the city. Yeah. Are you, you know, um, like there's times when I get upset about it, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it is what it is. I know. Are you, are you still in? Are you still living in Hackney or? Uh, I've got I've got my place in Hackney. Yeah. Um, my mum still lives in Hackney. My yeah. studio is still in Hackney. Okay. Uh, where I live, is just a little bit outside of Hackney. <laughs> okay, I hear you. I hear and you. The only the only reason for that was is the face was getting a little bit more popular, and I thought that I could hold out in Hackney for as long as possible. Oh, but then really? one day, I was outside. Um, not even I was outside. I I went to the shop come back 
and I bought my first G wag. I, I just yes. had, <laughs> I had it. I had it on um on the street on the street where I lived. Yeah, and there was just like three boys, just like one was sitting on it like the bonnet, and oh. then the other one was just like posing on it, and they're all talking, rolling up a spliff and all that. Oh, and like they, but I didn't know who they were. Okay. So when I went into the situation, it, I didn't go into it as locksmith from rudimental. I got to watch out for the press if anything happens. I went in there from. Leon from Hackney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I and, I, <laughs> and I kind of like stirred up a bit of issues there and I yeah. just like put people in their place kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. From then it was just like, it was just an issue. Like you go out your house and then someone would recognize you or whatnot. And I was just yeah. like, you know what, let me get a bit further out and I'll yeah. just come in for work. But I still stay there from now and, now and again. Yeah, it's mad, didn't it? It's like, although like it's nice to be outside of it, but yeah. it's those kind of areas that made like our sort of personalities, right? Ah, oh, definitely. hundred million percent, bro. No, and, seriously. Yeah, hundred. And you can't get away. I can't get away from it. Like, even if I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not living there now, but when I go mm. back to my mum and dad's and that, I, I still yeah. love it. There's something I love about the griminess of certain parts of yeah, London. Yeah, where yeah, I'm yeah, from. yeah, definitely. It's the character, bro. It's, it's the, the character. character. That's right. 100%. It is, bro. Like, it's, it's like, you, you're not going to get any other characters um, in terms of personnel like that in your borough yeah. elsewhere. Yeah, you know what I mean, like yeah. I'm. Uh, there's one. There's one. Um, oh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name. How can I forget his name? What is it? Oh, I think it's something like Leno. No, not even. It's just one drunk guy called Leno. Okay, yeah, but yeah. Everyone, <laughs> yeah, but everyone knows him. Everyone, knows you know him. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone knows him, and everyone says like, "Yo, what's going on, Leno?" Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah. it's just th- those kind of things, that, like that, kind of make you feel at home. Yeah, I hear. You. I'm not gonna lie. I don't. I don't get that in Wandsworth area, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> see, see you. Yeah, when you sent me your firm roller. By the way, thank you. I'll tell you what. No worries, man. It's a, it's a big vibrator, fam. <laughs> 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 when you sent me that, when I was like SW, you said raw. You moved to SW. I was like, oh no, nah. I just got judged by Mandem. <laughs> <laughs> Southwest man, South, dirty I like, South. I was like, don't ever say that again, bro. <laughs> like, but it is what it is, man. It, it is, is what it is, is though, isn't it? Is. Yeah, but it's it's. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's nice. Like living around here, yeah, not having to look behind me when I'm walking is kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, but the thing is, you yeah, go on, mate. Sorry, no, no, no you, go, go, go. you go, you go, you go. I was just saying, like when we when you're living sort of like in the boroughs that we grew up in, in your you're constantly looking over your shoulder. You're expecting something to happen to the point where it just becomes normal. Yeah. So then when you move out, you actually do those same things in what you probably, or people may consider a safer area. And then you're doing it, you're doing it. And you're like, oh man, it's a bit boring now. Nothing's actually happening. Nothing's (laughs) turning up. Do you know what I mean? And you actually have to say good morning, (laughs) you know what I mean? To people out there and that, because they accept it. It's like, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Yeah. And it's mad because when I go back to my mum and dad's, right? I go back to my mum and dad's and I'm like, someone knocks on the door and I'm like, yes, some action. Who's that, bruv? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that on my door? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Bro, I go knock on my mum's door and she doesn't even answer the door. She knocks on the window down below because like, her bedroom's down below. And she'll knock yeah. on the window, open up the curtain and then open up the window a little bit more and say, Who's that? I was like, yeah. it's your son. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's, but again, again, that sort of environment made us the way we are, isn't it? Which no, I would never. Totally. And you know what? It benefits me everywhere I go in the world because I'm like, I consider myself quite street smart. And yeah, exactly. When I, totally. when, I, when I see so many people that travel, especially young people, like sometimes mm. I think when I mean young, like even like my age or whatever, and I'm like, how can you be so stupid sometimes traveling? Just be a little bit aware of your surroundings. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> I mean, totally. It's mad. Yeah, and that, that and common sense. <laughs> yeah, common sense, bro. 100%. <laughs> it's mad. Oh, yeah, common sense isn't so common, you know? <laughs> Trust yeah. me, bro. It really isn't. And you know what? That's probably my one worry for my newborn because she's, she's going to be born into sort of not... Oh, how can I say this without sounding so pretentious? No. She's oh, going to be, she's going to have a head start in life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because yeah. of the position that I'm in. Yeah. Although she'll never ever live a life of privilege. She is privileged. 
Yeah. And I say this about my 10 year old as well. My 10 year old, he's still, he's in school in Hackney still. Yeah. So okay. he's amongst it. But my yeah. newborn, I know she's going to grow up outside of it. So that's my one worry, that common sense and that awareness. You know, yeah. my boy's got it already. I could probably send him on a train to West End and back and he'd be fine. Yeah, yeah. But um, the newborn, I've got, to, I've got to work out a strategy for that. But you know what? I think my strategy is, um, I heard Rio Ferdinand once on a big nasty show, innit? He was just like, he's going to throw yeah. his kids in the ends for a couple hours. And if they survive, when he... <laughs> <laughs> and then he's all right <laughs> you know so i'm like it's not I'm a bad like, shot bro it's not... survival of the fittest you know what i mean all right make it happen make it, <laughs> make happen. it happen you know so with the traveling there you've obviously tra- you've traveled the world bruv right yeah mm-hmm. and, and you know what Definitely. you you guys toured with ed sheeran is that right oh yeah we've done we've done a lot with ed yeah you we've done. traveled all over the world i think the second or third time that we went to America, we supported Ed. Yeah. And that that was an amazing experience because obviously Ed's playing in arenas. Yeah. And it wasn't even America. It wasn't just America. It was Australia as well and New Zealand. Okay. I know. And- I know because I just clocked. I was like, I remember first going to watch Ed Sheeran, right? In Sydney. Right. AN, ANZ Stadium. Allianz. Right. Stadium. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Allianz yeah, yeah. Stadium. And I remember I was at the right back. I had the shittest seats, right? I was there with my ex-girlfriend. I was at the shittest seats. And I remember I'm kind of like rudimental. And I was like, yeah, this is sick. And then I just clocked. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I've seen lots of it, like six years ago in Sydney. And I was like, and then like, today I'm, I've got you on my podcast. So for me, that's like, I'm like, again, mum, dad, I made it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean that's, that's, that's credit to yourself bro and like I said like when I when I see stuff on social media or in people I grav- gravitate towards it you yeah. know and you had something in yourself not to like blow hot air up your ass but yeah, yeah. yourself James Lima you lot got something about you where it's, it's just positive man and I love that oh, and I love watching you. it I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. What's um when you were when you were traveling, right? With mm. Ed and that, all the arenas to arenas. Like yeah, yeah. when it got to that level, because you're at a level where things were mad anyway. But did that take yeah, yeah. It, did that take it to like a whole different thing? Oh uh, yeah, look, I'll give you some positives and then I'll bring it right down right back down to reality. Um yes. yeah. you've got you got the positives of you're playing in front of thousands of people. Yeah. And, uh, crazy amounts of people in arenas yeah. with Ed Sheeran, you know, and I don't know Ed Sheeran as say, uh, John from Derby does. I know Ed Sheeran as the person. So yeah. I don't, I don't really understand all that big fame stuff, but yeah. at the same time, we got a taste of it when we was there and you're jumping up on stage and people sing along to your songs in countries you've never, ever been to before. And it's just a surreal feeling. Like I can't, I can't really explain it. There's not enough adjectives to describe how great that is. You know what I mean? And then yeah. to take it off to another level, not only was, was we touring with him, yeah. we were making music with him um, within studios around the world. And yeah. I remember one occasion where we was in a studio in LA and this moment here literally just blew our minds. And it was a case of us in the studio, just us and Ed. That's how we thought the session was going to be. Yeah. Ed comes up with uh, a bright idea out of nowhere. He's like, oh, wait, should I, should I call the game? I was like, you what? What? Should I call the game and tell him to come down? So I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah, of course. So we're like, yeah, bring him. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. I shit you not. 15 minutes later, the game's come through the door. Bam. What? The game's in there. And it's the game, uh, us and Ed. And we're just vibes in. We probably, oh, how many tunes do we, we probably made four tunes with the game and Ed, like literally sitting in a hard drive. And this is from, yeah, probably about five, maybe five, four years ago. Um, yeah, anyway, made those tunes and I thought, right, this is mad. Like, the, and you know, like you're one of them ones, you're like shook in the corner. This is the game, do you know what I mean? But he's blessed. He's, he's such a cool guy. Um, oh, that's amazing. Then, Bro, it doesn't stop there though. This is this is one of the positives that I'm telling you about. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I'm like, all right, I need to go to the toilet at some point or whatever. I go to the toilet. Now we're in this like infamous studio in LA. I've forgotten the name. I'll get it for you later. Yeah. Walking through the corridors, I walk past one door and then walk back because I recognise a face. It's only yeah. Johnny Depp. 
Johnny nah. Depp nah. playing the guitar, guitar in the studio. And I'm like, yo, is that you, right, mate? And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I just kept on walking. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? It's crazy. But it didn't stop there. I literally carried on walking, trying to find where the toilet was. Looked in another room. You got all the One Direction boys and Ellie Golden in there. And it's that's a madness. It's like this is all blow bloody mind at the minute. I'm like, how is everyone in this one spot at the same time? And bro, it was just like it was moments like that, one after the other, after the other, like to the point where I'm ending up on a on um a cruise ship with Snoop Dogg, and bro, we're just what? having in Miami kind of thing. And the kind of character I am is like, I don't like to show all that stuff on social media. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean, yeah. but they're, they're memories that are fixated in my mind and in our minds. But you got that side, you got the positive side of that. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can just imagine what goes on when <laughs> all those different characters are in one room and it's yeah, just, yeah. it's just mad. Anyway, the negatives, I get extremely homesick. You know, being away from home is really tough for me. Yeah. Um, and you lose a sense of reality when you work in the nature that I work in. Do you know what I mean? You're jumping from that. city to city. Bro, there's times when you jump on a tour bus yeah. and you wake up and you're, you're, in a, you're in a different city, like 100 miles away. And you're like, whoa, how has this happened? Yeah. And to get yourself back to reality, you think you need to, I don't know, drink maybe. You know what I mean? Some of the other boys might take some drugs or this, that, and the other. Yeah, but yeah. you just, you, you're in a whole different place. Yeah. And it's really hard to have a sense of reality. And I remember one time, the way I kind of reacted to that. <laughs> Did I, have I mentioned this before? I don't know if I've mentioned this before. <laughs> it, was in, it was in the changing room. We had, we had finished our show. Yeah. Um, Ed had finished his show. And I was going through... Mentally, I was going through some shit where I just really miss my son, you know, yeah, and I yeah. just wanted to be back home with him. And I didn't know how to express that. And as a yeah. youngster, I had a short temper. So it comes out in spells. So it came out in this particular moment. And I literally trashed Ed Sheeran's change room. room. <laughs> no way. <laughs> literally, like, trashed it, bro. I, I ripped up the carpet, smashed two, like, 50-inch TVs. No. And just like... <laughs> <laughs> it was pandemonium. And then, like, I walked, like, walked out, and his tour manager came over to me and said, don't worry about anything. We've all been through it, this, that, and the other. And Ed was like, yeah, bro, uh, don't worry about it. It's all cool. I was like, thanks for your understanding. Uh, it's going to cost you five grand, though. <laughs> <laughs> That is, you know what, I, I hear that about, because you're very family orientated, I can tell from your socials. 100%, 100%, man. And so am I, and from your like cultural mm. background, I feel like we're all sort of, we're close to our family, you, ha you feel like you, you need to look after your family, so even when you Hardly. go, there's a, yeah, 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 yeah. the main piece is kind of missing for them, I would, I would like to say, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, man, totally. And uh, for me, growing up, it was missing for me. Yeah. Um, my mum and my sisters... We were extremely close, but my dad wasn't around. And that was a massive issue for me. Massive issue for me. Like, I was a Arsenal scholar up until the age of 15. Um, and I reckon I could have I could have went a lot further yeah. um, if I had that role model around. And I didn't yeah. have that role model around. You know, yeah. you're looking on the side of the football pitch and you're, like, you're looking at all the boys and their dads are up there whispering in the coach's ears and... And it's just one of those where if you're like, oh man, I've got no one. I'm coming here single on my own. And that was, that was tough for me. I always blamed him for that. Yeah. I hear that. When um, it's mad, you know, like being raised in like those sort of areas, don't you get, there's mm -hmm. so many like kids, more well, like yourself, you're playing football, but you're obviously talented with music. There's so much urban talent that mm, is there mm, mm. and sometimes never yeah. get discovered. Oh, mate, it's ridiculous. It's mad. It's when, ridiculous. It's, when, rid it's crazy. When, when did you tap into music? Was it always a thing? So, it, it was always a thing. Um, for me, my love of music came from sort of like my older sister and my older brother. Mm -hmm. As well as my mum, because my mum was heavily into music. And all I ever did, first thing I used to do when I woke up in the morning, 
uh, was go play football outside. And then when I come back in, I would go onto her vinyl and I'll scratch up all her vinyls, like her old records. And she would go mad. She would go ballistic. And like, I'm talking Anita Baker, Michael Jackson, like some real classics, Marvin Gaye, I'll scratch up. And she was like, what are you doing? I was just like, I just want to, I just want to be that DJ, you know? I was just like, I want to DJ. I want to play music. I want to do this as well. So the following year, she bought me uh, a pair of decks. Yeah. And they were the best decks you could get on the market. They were Techniques 1210s. I had no right to have those. They, those were the equivalent to what Pioneer decks are now, you know? Like okay, you, yeah. you would see them in every club or every radio uh, set up, radio station set up. So I had those. And from then, I never looked back. I just started looking into production and DJing. And I was, at, I was 12 years old. I grew up with the rest of the rudimental boys from about five years old. Oh, um, barring them. Yeah, exactly. And we all shared the same passion. It was music, um, football, and chasing the same girls. So, yeah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and that just that music and football ran parallel to each other until one one got uh more lucrative than the other okay and okay. it took a long while it took a long while it took like we was on the grind from when we properly properly started calling ourselves rudimental it was probably about 18 19 okay um I, i'm 33 now so to get to this point now where i can say you know what i'm actually comfortable financially yeah um it's taken two decades do you know yeah. what i mean yeah and people and, forget- and people do forget that bro and this is why a lot of talent goes undiscovered because you're looking at a lot of talented people there's a massive pool of talent especially in inner city country um in this inner city yeah um and boroughs yeah and they get overlooked and then they give up you know and then yeah. once you give up, it starts becoming a habit. Yes. You know what and, I mean? And everything you do, you just... You just what's the point? Give, what's the point? What's the point? It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And then you never it's fully know where it can go, which is... Cra- this is it. Which is crazy. Oh, man. What... Um, I, I can't... Like, it's mad to think how much more can actually happen when what, what, people like us can actually reach out and help. But obviously, you need, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to look after yourself before you look after others. I would, totally. I would like to hope one day I'm in a position where I've got so much time in my hands where I can potentially discover other people or just a helping hand yeah. in one way or another. Because totally. you never know who the next Michael Jackson is like. You never know, right? No, this is it. It's, it's totally that, man. And that's why I... Like, even yourself like i know a lot of people in my situation um no disrespect to you yeah. they'll probably look down on you yeah I like when that. we when we first met do you know yeah, what i mean they'll probably yeah, they'll, yeah. Look, they'll look down to you but then i've never had that in me like we're all human beings we're all on the same level we we have to eat to survive you know yeah. like it's it's, it's it's like why would you treat someone different or below you or beneath you yeah. I never really understood that. And I go about my life trying to treat everyone the way I would like to be treated. Yeah. Like, if I act like a cunt, then you're going to have to treat me like a cunt. But that's oh, sorry. right. Say that. no, 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 you can say whatever you want, bruv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah <laughs> Do you, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. if, if I act that way, then you're going to treat me that way. Yeah. So in my head, it's like, if I say good morning to a complete stranger, it's not yeah. I'm trying to say or trying to be like, oh, I want to be your best friend. I'm just, I'm just trying to treat you the way I would want to be treated. Do you know what I mean? 100%. And me, me, uh, when someone, all right, for example, let me give you an example. Yeah. Within my DMs, people just send me their music constantly. constantly I was going to say, constantly. you'd get that all the time. Yeah. Just all the time, constantly. And I make a habit of it, of listening to as much as I can and give my honest feedback. Yeah. Because although they may not be there, and I, I tell you this, like 95% of the time, then they're, they're not where they need to be or yeah. the quality of them is not great. Yeah. But I would always try and give a sentence or two sentences back to them, productive sentences of how they can better themselves. Yeah. So 
like, well, I could do music forever. I could be behind yeah. the scenes, but I, there could be a point. I, I'm never ever going to be able to maintain it at this level that we're yeah. at forever. Yeah. yeah. And you're going to call and you're going to draw upon what's new and what's exciting. And if I was ignorant and or arrogant and yeah. totally disregarded some of the people that come or come across my path, yeah. when they eventually go through their trials and tribulations and they make it to where they wanted to make it or reach their goals or achieve greatness, yeah. and I need to call upon them, like, yeah. it's going to be difficult if I was arrogant or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Of course, of course. Everything works full circle for me. And just treat people the way you'd like to be treated and it will come back to you, man. 100%. Do you, I've always lived by that. And I've always, and, I, and I'll tell you now, it's opened me a lot of doors. Oh, massively. It's opened me massively. a lot of doors. Like, even like when I got my first plug through socials, it was through, James gave me my first plug. And, okay, cool. and when, I, when I met him, I had, he, had, he didn't have any followers. When he came into the gym, I took him out for a coffee. I, I helped him with what he needed help with for no, for no reason, really. I was just like, he yeah. seemed like a nice guy. I was just helping him. That opened yeah, a door yeah, yeah, for yeah. me. That opened a Wicked. door for me. And then me helping him open him doors up and it just goes around. And that's why it's so important to always keep that vibe. Do you, have you ever met anyone that's big time that has kind of spoke down to you at the time you were coming up and where you've been like, man, I'm so disappointed. Uh, you know what? There probably has been. Yeah. You don't have to mention times. their name. You don't have to mention. No, no, no. It's cool. Um, mate, if I could remember their names, <laughs> yeah. I would mention their names. A hundred million percent. I would. I would out them. Yeah. But yeah. for me, I, I don't take that on. I remember in the early stages of us, like jumping into the music industry at this level, I used to take it to heart. Yeah. You know, I really used to take it to heart and it, it used to upset me. And the rest of the boys used to just like, they were able to shrug it off. Maybe they saw the bigger picture and I didn't at the time, but yeah. I used to just take it to heart and it used to stick with me. So if you ask me this question, like maybe 10 years ago, yeah, I'll probably be able to say, yeah, that motherfucker and that, that fucker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that him yeah. and the... But as time went on, it just fell off me like, like water. And and I think you have to do that because if you keep holding on to that kind of stuff and that negativity, it kind of yeah. slows down you on your journey. Hundred percent. You start worrying about other people instead of worrying about what you're, what the moves you should be making, right? Exactly. This and is it, man. And that's why I think, I think like it's so important to have the mentality of simply not giving a fuck. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. No, no. If, and you, I, <laughs> if you care too much, you start caring for the wrong people, for the wrong things, and it just puts a fucking brick wall on your... Hey, mate, mate, you know this I mean? is what the powers that be want us to do. They yeah. want us to fight each other, kill each other, and they want us to suppress ourselves. Yeah. And you can see it in social media, you know. Social media is... You know, I don't... To be fair to Instagram, when it first came out, it was designed for creative people artists to show off their work i remember yeah, when it yeah. first came out i was like this is so sick because i'm really heavily into sort of like my videography and photography yeah, yeah yeah so i was like this is so sick and the first thing i said is it will not stay like this for long because human nature will not allow it yeah and, yeah, yeah yeah and fair dues to it. it that's what's happened but at the same time there's some serious positives from it and there's some real negatives from it and the negatives are the fact that people go on social media, one, to judge and to judge themselves. Yeah. And that's pretty sad. And that's the world we're kind of living in at the minute. But when you guys come out and you come out with that not caring attitude, as well as, you know, this is a positive way to go about your life, empowering yeah. people, yeah. you know, it's, just, it's an amazing thing because in my eyes and through my history, I haven't seen someone come on social media like yourself and James with zero fucks given <laughs> that, in that nature. Do you know sick. what I mean? Like, yeah. and that's, just, that's what's cool about you. And we, we definitely, we definitely egg each other on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. It's even better. It's like, you know, you got back up in it when someone comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's standard, yeah. But the yeah. thing is, you don't know, it's not, it's like you got, 
you got people with that zero fucks given attitude, but they, they don't know what they're talking about. And they're not <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I hear, no? that. I hear that. I hear that. And I, I see, I, you know, I, I see you making moves to fitness, bro. Don't make me come into the music industry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, please do, bro. You're welcome. I, I, know, I, know, I know you heard my bars when I said it to you once. I was drunk, innit? <laughs> Do you remember that? Hey, that night was too much, man. I was in stick shit. The worst thing is I was drunk as well. I was, I was, this guy was sending me bars. Uh, where was you? You were in Bali, weren't you? Or I, I was in Bali. You were in Australia, I think, working. Oh, yeah, that's what it was. And I think, I think you finished the work night or something. And uh, you, you must have replied to one of my DMs. And I was like, and I started, I started rapping. It was so bad, bro. It was so bad. But I remember you sending me a video back going, oh my God, I'm dead. I was like, listen, bro. Nah, I literally, I was in tears, bro. I was in tears. If you want to sign me, just chat to management. It's calm, isn't it? Yeah, no, I got it. I got their email. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Somewhere. Do you, um, I, I know you love your fitness, bro. You love your fitness. Yeah, no, I'm massively into it. Um, you love your fitness. I love, I love the power of fitness. Not even fitness, physical activity, exercising, and the way it makes you feel, you know? Like... I wouldn't, I wouldn't have survived everything that I've been through in my life. So I'm talking from an early age. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. it wasn't down to sports, physical activity. Yeah. You know, I'm, they were, I'm, they were I mean, my outlet. Yeah, I was gonna say because if you didn't have that, and I think it's so important being raised in Hackney, all those areas, you need that. I mean, even you on stage, I've seen you work the crowd, bro. That looks yeah. tiring. I uh, may it is. I remember I put on a heart rate monitor at one point, and it was like eight hundred calories in uh, a ninety-minute set. So yeah, it's it, <laughs> we go in, <laughs> we go in. That's mad. No joke, we go in. But yeah, no, you got that side of it. The obvious reasons because you want to look good on stage, you want to look good in front of the camera, and then you got the other mental side of it, like like all the things I mentioned. And yeah. mate, there's been some real low moments and. I've got out of those low moments by um, indulging in physical activity. I've got a balance wrong at times, don't get me wrong, to the yeah, point where, you know what I mean, like I'm in such a negative spiral with work or family or lack of family in my life. Yeah. And I end up just exercising too much to the point where it's like, <laughs> I can just, I, I remember there was one point I, I was in such a bad headspace, I wanted to quit rudimental and it was nothing to do with the boys it was to do with everything that came with music yeah and i i remember just waking up one, one morning i did a 10k run and mate it felt like I, I literally just ran to the bus stop i didn't feel one bit of fatigue or at least you know what i mean and i, yeah, I just yeah. ended up exercising for another two hours after that and i was like whoa whoa i'm trying to escape way too much yeah uh, for, because as soon as you stop, you're back to reality. So you have to get the balance right. 100%. Definitely have to get the balance right. But yeah, that's that's that's. I've got a massive passion for that, and I got. A, the, my thinking is, if I feel like this, and I'm in a position that I'm in, you know, yeah, there's got to be someone who's not in the best position in their lives yeah. Yeah. that feel that way, you know. And yeah. if they can see someone like me, you know, going through the hard times and getting out of it through physical activity and my passion for fitness, then hopefully it can help someone else. hundred percent. And, and it does. You, and you, and you, and you show that on your socials, which is good for everyone to see. Cause yeah. it shows that like, like you said, well, you're in a studio with the game and they're cheering like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and then you're, and then you're telling everyone all the stuff that you're going through as well, which yeah. just shows that you're human, you know, and more people yeah. and more people should talk about it with, yeah, with the, with definitely. your, with your fitness stuff, because you're fit, you are fit. When you went over to safe, SA bros. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my size, my size. <laughs> when, when, when you went to SAS, did it help? Right. Yeah. What was that like, bruv? That's a madness. I'm watching this. Though. I'm loving right. it. I'm oh, loving mate. it. When does it go out? When does it go out? It's uh, the next one is on Monday. The next one is on Monday. Yeah, but wait, on Monday. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. You're still in, though. I think. What Monday? What time does this go at? Oh, what this? after the show or before? Yeah, this, this. I'm talking about. But not you, SAS. Listen, bro. You tell me when you want it to go out, and I'll make, and then you can tell me what you want. I'll make sure it's out after. All right, cool. So let's make it uh, if you can make it go out after next week's episode. Okay, sick. Let's do that. All right, done. Yeah. So with the SAS, um, 
it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. Okay. Um, not only physically, but mentally. And yeah. the maddest thing is you're watching it back. I'm watching it for the first time like you guys are. I haven't watched it before. You know, yeah. they don't let you into that. They're so secretive about everything they do on that show. From the moment you get on site, there's like this person with an envelope and they say, put all your electronics in here. And this is a oh, day before hey. you even actually go on the show. Like, do you know what I mean? I'm like, bro, we're not even on the show yet. What's going on? But you know me being a hackney boy. Yeah, yeah. I've got a burner, I've got burner phones. <laughs> <laughs> I've rolled off in there with a burner phone. Right, you got, the, got that 8210. 8210. All right, bro, don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's how strict they are on the show, bro. And like even the cameramen and the audio guys, none of them speak to you. None of them speak to you. Like literally, like they'll be changing your audio pack and they won't speak to you. And I saw, I saw a news, newspaper report actually today where they said um, SAS is fake um, because there was an incident in the pool area where th- I think a couple people changed yeah. uh, position. Okay, yeah, 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 was, yeah. Bro, they put on a program that we were in that uh, we were in the war for twenty five minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. We were nowhere in there for twenty five minutes. It was literally thirty five minutes or beyond. Really. And the only way we survived was by them saying, get back up, come out the water, and then you'd have to do laps carrying people, and then you go straight back in the water. Stay so warm. when we went back, yeah, so then when we went back into the water, that's when the positions kind of changed. Okay. And so when, they, when, they, when they're saying, oh, it's not real, yeah, mate, it is the realest thing i've ever done Bro, you, know, you, know, you know how i know it was real your, your face your face expression bro oh when you're watching it on tv from the comfort of your sofa you're seeing 10 percent of what we've done yeah you know that's what I mean? so true Literally that's 10 yeah 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 so like lot last the last episode that's just been on you'll see a lot more well you've probably seen a lot more of myself on this one yeah and you know I've got a, a football injury, a knee injury that I've had from I was about 21. Yeah. And I've I've been able to maintain it through just sort of rehab and whatnot. When you go on the show, you haven't got time to do rehab. You ain't got time yeah. to be foam rolling and you know, bloody stretching out. It's like they're waking you up three o'clock in the middle of the morning and you're, you're having to go do, get a beast in. So yeah. this this episode here shows a lot about me and I was really nervous about it being shown because it it shows me um, being very vulnerable, the vulnerable side of Locksmith, not even Locksmith. I feel like they get Leon on this show and I, I don't show no one that. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And And that was scary for me. But watching it back and seeing me go through so much pain and seeing how how much you can achieve through having the right mindset because the mind is definitely more powerful than you know the biceps or you know, the muscles that you've got like i said when i was going through that negative spiral i was running 10k and i didn't even feel nothing yeah so if you can adapt that men- mentality for something positive you can get through it yeah and that's the only way i got through it mate it was horrific <laughs> so do they do they like they actually test you mentally and they push you. oh bro it's just, it's an understatement. They literally break you down so they can rebuild you again. The only way you can truly find out about yourself is by being broken down to your bare bones. And then you start looking at yourself you're like, raw, am I that guy? <laughs> 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 is that me? <laughs> Do you know? No. You're like, bro, you start crying and you're like, yes. <laughs> bro, they, it, it's, it's so good though. Like, um, but I went in there, um, luckily, in a better headspace, or probably the best headspace that I've been in for a long while. But whilst being on the show, I realised that actually I have some underlying issues that I need to take care of, um, especially once I got out of the show. And the only way I got <laughs> got to see that was by was by being stripped down, stripped yeah. down to like physically, like being shown that I'm I'm actually not good enough but I had to dig it out of somewhere. Mentally, I had to see if I was strong enough. 
And where did that strength come from? Where did that drive? Where did that desire come from? Yeah. And if you've missed the last episode, watch the last episode because it's, uh, I'll say about 80% of the show is probably about myself. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I intense. watched it. No, I watched it. It was like, it's mad, bruv. And when I saw you were going on there, I was like buzzing. I was like, yes, sick. I was yeah. like, I can't, I, can't, I can't wait to see this. Cause I, I also, I know Yasmin, innit? Ah, uh, Yaz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yaz. She, um, she used to uh, come into Fitness First Oxford Circus and my mate used to train. All right. Her. So she used yeah, to come in every day. So, and she's lovely. Like she's so nice. Down to earth. And I know yeah, you, you two got along, right? Oh, of course. Way before that anyway. Yeah, like we've had nights out together and whatnot. So we got on really, really well. Um, bless her, she was a soldier on there. And it didn't, it didn't really get shown as much as it should have. Yeah. Uh, she, had a, she had a horrific injury. And uh, I don't know if you saw the episode where we're carrying the logs up the hill. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, I saw mountain, that. rather. Yeah, 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 up the hill, up the mountain. And she's struggling, but she's literally got one foot to go on. Um, and we both got each other through that one. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I've seen her train. She puts, she puts in the work in the gym. I've seen her in the gym. No, definitely. definitely. No, she puts it in. Did, did, you, <laughs> did you know, like, when you were going in, did they tell you who was going to be on there? All right, so yeah, I mentioned before how secret it was, yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's worse than just your phones going in. So they don't tell you you've actually, you've actually been selected to go on the show until a month before. Oh, snap. Yeah. So you've literally got a month to prepare. So it's kind of messed up in that way. They don't tell you who's going to be on the show. You're not allowed to know. Okay. Um, they don't even tell you where you're going. So that the first time that I found out where we're actually going, what country we're going to, was in the airport lounge. They didn't even let me see my bloody uh, boarding pass. <laughs> they, they tapped my boarding pass for me. <laughs> you almost <laughs> mad. You're, 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 chi you're chilling in a lounge, yeah? And then you're getting ready to get violated, bruv. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. It's just like, so does anyone know where we're going? I remember jumping into a lounge with uh, Joey Essex and Brendan from a Strictly Come Dancing and I'm yeah. like, I, I, don't, I don't know them guys. At that, particular, yeah. at that time, I didn't know them. Um, yeah. So I'm just like, so this is the first time. So there was, you went in groups of three. Okay, yeah. So I'm like, all right, so you lot are obviously on the show. And they're like, yeah, yeah, we're in, we're in. And I'm like, where are we going? Uh, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no one knew. Like, literally, it was like that, bro. No one knew. We eventually found out we was going to Scotland. So that's, yeah. that's how secretive they are. But like if anything mad. slips out, they're mad. Bro, I'll show you, I'll tell you one funny thing that happened. I know Ant, right? Yeah, yeah. From Soccer Aid. Okay, yeah. And yeah, well, we had a proper laugh at Soccer Aid and we got on really, really well. And we kept He's in a contact nice guy. Nice. I met him. In no, he is. Nice he guy. is. Yeah. He is a proper nice guy. So you gotta imagine up and like for a good year, was it yeah, about a year of knowing Ant, all I've called him is Ant. Did you know what I mean? Okay. So well, that's all. I, that's all I know. So I don't think they've shown it, and I don't think they will show it in the show. But there was one point. And this is how real the show is, and anyone that says otherwise, I'm living proof. I wouldn't lie to anyone. It, it truly is. I've got nothing to prove or nothing to uh, gain from lying. It is yeah. so real. So there must have been at one point. I must have just. I must have had to do something. And I said, "All right, and I'll do that for you." He said, "What?" No I way. Like, <laughs> I was like, sorry, Staff. <laughs> bro, I felt like I was back at school. I was like, I don't know, bro. Oh, yeah, I went back, my arms were all droopy. I just <laughs> ran off. <laughs> you know, you know, when I chatted to him, uh, I, I met him in a lounge. We were, we were on our way to James's book tour. And do you know where uh, he's from? You know where he's from? France. Yeah, but you know, you know, he, he told me he was raised in Wood Green, bruv. No, yes, Wood Green, Chelmsford. Yeah. yeah, I was like, or is it the other way around? No, I think I think he was raised in Wood Green because I was like, when I was chatting to him, I could I could tell like he likes man. Yeah, he likes man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I clocked on because I watched another episode. I was like, oh, you got along with that guy, innit? I was like, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> like sizing him up. Because I was raising wood green, I was like, that explains so much, bro. I was like, yeah, that definitely explains so much. Bro, but he's he, he's literally he's he's moved about like literally yeah, he can yeah, speak yeah. fluent like fluent French. Oh, that, no one don't really not a lot of people know that. I didn't know um, that. like 
yeah, he grew up in France a bit, transferred, and I think we're green, yeah. Yeah. Did you get along with all the other boys, like all Jay and all them guys? Yeah, well, not on, not whilst we were on there. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, Fucking yeah, hell, yeah. they put us real. hell. But yeah, 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 afterwards, like, keep in contact with them boys. Uh, yeah, all of them, literally all of them. Like, we actually speak on a daily, funny enough. Oh, that's sick. That's good, that's good. That's yeah, man. Good. They're good lads, man. I, I remember when, um, I think you guys were doing the shooting thing, innit? And you, 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 shot, <laughs> <laughs> you shot the wrong guy, bruv, it? I was like, locksmith. I was like, no, bro. You shot bro. the wrong brother. You shot the wrong like brother. I, <laughs> I was like, no. I was like, no, no. like I said, bro, no, they I'm only not. show you 10% of that. They don't show you the beasting that we had like two hours before that. <laughs> and then they, <laughs> the maddest thing is, you see a short clip of us like in this ditch and in that ditch, it was covered. It was a bed of um, stinging nettles, a bed of stinging nettles. And you're sitting in there and all you can hear, like you're sitting in there, you're like, your arms crossed and like, no one's not really talking to each other. And then when someone starts talking, you're like, shh, 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 shh. And then all you can hear is gunfire, gunfire. Pa, 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 pa. Pa, 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 And you're like, so they're getting into your head. They're getting you like ready to shoot kind of thing. Cause all you can hear is gunfire. And then, they shout out your number. Number six, you have to jump out the ditch and then they grab you and they literally drag you for about 100 yards, bro. throw water in your face whilst you're blindfolding and you're bagged. Yeah. And then they open up like, they take off like the blindfold or the, the, the baggage and they say, shoot him, shoot him. I'm like, bro, I'm shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shooting. I watched it back and I was like, Hey, lucky you're not gonna stop them. <laughs> it just it felt like I was going on forever. It's like, da, 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 you got you got gun happy, bro. You got gun happy. Oh, <laughs> 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 even if I knew he was the wrong guy, I come yeah. on, I have to let off the gun yeah, on TV, yeah, yeah. surely. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it wasn't a map because I was always wondering. I know these guys are like they're laying there, they're sleeping there, the food that they're eating. Oh, when the cameras go off, do they order some jerk chicken to rice and beans? Oh, <laughs> mate, mate, no, nowhere, na- nowhere near, nowhere near, really? nowhere near. You're literally on 800 calories a day. Oh, what? And 800 calories a day, literally. And you're you're doing mad shit, bro. Sleep deprivation. Yeah. Like, uh, I remember we did a 10k uh, hike at one point, and then we had to do uh, what was it? Oh yeah, that's it. We had to jump out of a helicopter backwards. Oh, that was mad. Yeah. See that? Oh my days, bruv. I would have shat myself. I'm not gonna lie, bruv. Bro, and I'm I'm mad scared of heights as well. <laughs> mad scared of heights. But I just buried it. I buried it. All my fears, I just said to myself, you know, I'm just gonna bury it for as long as I can. Yeah. And just get on with it. So I just did it, didn't speak, just bam, just got it done. Sick guy. Rate that. I'll rate that so much. And bro, like honestly, it's been an honor having you on, man. This was so much fun. Oh, this, thanks like, for having me, like, brother. <laughs> no, no doubt. Seriously. Some of the other people can get upset, but like, it's definitely one of my favorite episodes, bro. Legit, <laughs> oh, bless, <laughs> Legit one Respect. of my favorite episodes. Is there is there anything you'd like to say to any of my followers, listeners, where they can find you? They know where to find you, bro. But you got to tell them. <laughs> yeah, like. Like, you know what, first and foremost, I hope everyone's staying safe and staying positive. You know, I know a lot of our shows have uh, been postponed or cancelled even, but there's a lot of things out there that's been cancelled. So we will be back as soon as possible on a rudimental side. On the locksmith side, I've just launched my gym clothing uh, brand. It's called They Call Me Locksmith. Uh, You can find it on theycallmelocksmith.com. Uh, we've got everything from, uh, I forgot myself. <laughs> At the minute, it's hats. Yeah. We've got hats on there. And we've got a vibrating foam roller, which I've given to yourself. Yes, yeah, good. Uh, and we've got a 10 kg weighted vest. I keep saying, we, we, we. No yeah. one else is doing this. It's just me. <laughs> yeah, but, but you it's know what? You're, you're a team player, bro. I do the same, yeah. bro. Oh, you're a yeah. team player. So sometimes it's just a habit of, you like being a part of a team. But it's all good. Bro. Yeah, that's that's all it is. But yeah, there's a lot happening this this year and for next year. So just watch the space, I guess. Yes. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you share, subscribe, and you shall see my next stories when there is a next rudimental concert. I'll be there backstage, fanboying, no doubt. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs>